Organic chemistry has loads of aliphatic reactions that you need to learn as part of your A-level. In this video, I'm going to take you through all the reactions you need to know for the OCRA specification, and I'll be using skeletal formula. I'll be throwing in some extra tips on the way, and if you'd like to go to a specific functional group, check out the timestamps in the video description. Our first reaction here is the alkene reacting with hydrogen in the presence of a nickel catalyst, which is a great example of a heterogeneous transition element catalyst to make an alkane. For the second reaction, we're going to be decolorizing some bromine as the halogen here reacts with our alkene to make a dihaloalkane. For our third reaction, we're going to take the same unsymmetrical alkene that we've used so far, which is the propene, and I'm going to react it with a hydrogen halide. As a result of this, I'm going to make two different structural isomer products. And actually, furthermore here, I'm going to be making a major product and a minor product. The major product is made from a more stable carbocation intermediate. It should also be noticed that the halogen and the hydrogen halide reactions also have the electrophilic addition mechanism to them as part of your A-level. For the final reaction here, I'm reacting steam with an alkene in the presence of an acid catalyst of either phosphoric acid or sulfuric acid to make an alcohol. You can also have the major minor split here if you have an unsymmetrical alkene, but there's no mechanism required. For this next category, I'm pairing together the alkanes and the haloalkanes. And for this very first reaction, I'm going to convert one into the other. So I'm taking here my alkane and reacting it with a halogen. I'm using chlorine in the presence of UV light to make a haloalkane. And the haloalkane I've made here is 2-chlorobutane. I've also made a hydrogen halide of HCl. Look out for the radical substitution mechanism that goes with this reaction as it's really important. Check out the link in the video description for more information. For the second reaction, I'm taking a haloalkane and I'm reacting it with sodium hydroxide to make an alcohol and a sodium halide. This reaction has a nucleophilic substitution mechanism that you are meant to be aware of, as does the third reaction just here, which is taking a haloalkane and reacting it with KCN in the presence of ethanol because it provides that all-important cyanide ion of CN negative. And what we're going to produce is a nitrile. This reaction is incredibly important in the A-level because it introduces an extra carbon to the chain. For the final reaction here of the haloalkanes, I'm going to take a haloalkane and react it with excess ammonia in the presence of ethanol to make a primary amine and some hydrogen halide. So you can see here I'm using one fluoropropane and I'm going to produce propanwanamine in the products. Now for this reaction, instead of ammonia, you could actually use a primary amine or a secondary amine and then the products would either be a secondary amine or a tertiary amine respectively. You could also balance this equation differently using the red on screen now. Next up, we've got probably one of the busiest functional groups in the A-level, it's the alcohol functional group. And for our first reaction here, we're taking an alcohol and reacting it in the presence of an acid catalyst of either phosphoric acid or sulfuric acid, along with some heat, to produce an alkene. So the two carbons in the double bond here that we can see on screen, one of those had to be the carbon that was originally bonded to the OH group, and then an adjacent carbon alongside it. We also produce some water in this reaction. For the next reaction, we're going to use some H2SO4 and some sodium halide salt to provide some HBr in situ. That means that the H2SO4 and the NABr react in the mixture to produce the HBr, which I'm representing here as H plus and Br minus, but you can write as HBr, to react with an alcohol to produce a haloalkane and some water. For the third reaction of our alcohols, we're moving into the realm of oxidation. So this means I'm going to need my oxidizing agent of acidified potassium dichromate 6. And for this first one, I'm going to take a primary alcohol and I'm going to oxidize it by heating it under distillation with the oxidizing agent. And that's going to produce an al aldehyde and some water. This is the only way to actually make an aldehyde in the A-level. Next up, what we're going to do is take the same alcohol, the exact same one, but instead of heating it under distillation, we're now going to heat it under reflux with the oxidizing agent, and that takes our primary alcohol to a carboxylic acid and once again some water. Just keep an eye on the balancing there because there's a 2 in front of the O in square brackets. For the next reaction, we can see we have a secondary alcohol this time, which is propantool, and this gets oxidized under reflux to form a ketone. Moving on and across the page, we're into the carboxylic acids. And here we're taking the carboxylic acid and reacting it with something called thionyl chloride, which is SOCl2, to produce an acyl chloride, some hydrochloric acid, and some SO2. 
Next up, this isn't strictly one of the aliphatic pathway reactions, but I do think it's important to show more than one way to make a carboxylate salt if we know one. And so here I'm taking ethanoic acid and reacting it with sodium hydroxide to make sodium ethanoate, our carboxylate salt here. There's another way to make one of these when we get to esters shortly. And speaking of esters, probably one of the most important reactions in the A-level. Here what we've got is our carboxylic acid and it's reacting with an alcohol. And this is going to be in the presence of an acid catalyst that I'll get to shortly. And what we produce here is an ester. The ester functional group is incredibly popular in the A-level and it's used in lots of spectroscopy questions. So make sure you know your esters inside out. Next up, we're moving into the ester functional group, and before we show how they react, let's have a look at one other way that we could make an ester. We've still got one further one to come with the acyl chlorides, but here I'm going to be using a functional group that you might have noticed was missing from the original list, because it is actually only used in this reaction in the A-level. What we have here is an acid anhydride reacting with an alcohol to make an ester and a carboxylic acid. This reaction has a lot going on in terms of different structures, in terms of making sure that you don't leave any atoms out. So please keep an eye on all your diagrams when you put this one together. It is really important. Okay, so it's time to start reacting these esters. Now we've had a couple of ways of making them. And for the first reaction, I'm going to do an acid hydrolysis. Here we react an ester with water in the presence of an acid catalyst to produce a carboxylic acid and some alcohol. The ester I went with here is actually named methyl ethyl ethanoate. And if you'd like more complicated ester naming practice, then check out the link in the video description. For the next reaction here and the final one of our esters, I'm going to be performing an alkali hydrolysis. Here there's no catalyst and instead of water, the reactant actually is the alkali here. And I'm reacting that with the ester to make a carboxylate salt. Here, for example, this is potassium ethanoate and I'm also going to make some alcohol. Next up here, I've got my favorite functional group. It's the acyl chlorides. There are four different reactions of the acyl chlorides that you need to know, but they only take up a very small section of the specification. So please don't underestimate them when you revise. For this first reaction, the acyl chloride can react with water to produce a carboxylic acid and some HCl in a very violent reaction. For the second reaction here, the acyl chloride reacts with an alcohol to produce, once again, an ester. So this is the third way to make an ester that we've seen on the page. They are a very popular functional group. We also make some HCl alongside the ester as well. For the third reaction here, we're using excess ammonia, and that's reacting with the acyl chloride to produce an amide. An amide is different from an amine. Make sure you can tell those apart. And we also make some ammonium chloride salt. And then for the final reaction here, we're going to take the acyl chloride and react it with a primary amine. And what we make in the product is a secondary amide. And so here I've still got the H on that nitrogen, but I've now maintained that branch. And I also make an amine salt. Moving across the page for the final time and into our final wave of functional groups, we're going to kick off here with the nitriles. The nitrile functional group can be quite tricky to draw in skeletal formula. So here I've got propane nitrile and here's a little guide on how you would actually represent this in skeletal formula so that you can keep an eye on the different structures that I'm going to be using across this section of the page. Now, we have already made a nitrile because we saw our haloalkane could react with KCN in the presence of ethanol to make a nitrile. But here we're going to look at how those nitriles actually react once we've made them. And this first reaction should be quite familiar to you because it's very similar to how an alkene becomes an alkane. Here, the nitrile reacts with hydrogen in the presence of a nickel catalyst to form a primary amine. For the second reaction, you can see here the nitrile is reacting with water and HCl in the presence of some heat to make a carboxylic acid and some ammonium salt. This one is very poorly remembered in my experience, so keep an eye on it. Next up here, we have our final two and very closely related functional groups because they are usually structural isomers of each other, aldehydes and ketones. And for this first reaction, it's aldehydes only because it can be oxidized by heating it under reflux with acidified potassium dichromate 6 to make a carboxylic acid only. There's no water in that reaction as another product, so please don't slip up with that mistake. Next up, we're going to look at some reduction reactions of our aldehydes and ketones, and so we're going to need a reducing agent. The reducing agent is NaBH4, and it's represented in the reaction equation as an H in square brackets. The aldehydes can get reduced by the NaBH4. 
using a nucleophilic addition mechanism, I would like to point out, to make a primary alcohol. And the ketones can get reduced by the NABH4 to make a secondary alcohol using the same nucleophilic addition mechanism. The aldehydes and ketones can only go back to these respective alcohol classifications. You can't cross these over. So keep an eye on this when you're drawing your structures in the exam. Next up here, and we're going to look at another use of the nucleophilic addition mechanism, but this time with a different nucleophile. When we had the NABH4, we were using a hydride nucleophile for that reduction reaction. Here, what we're going to be using is a CN- nucleophile, a cyanide nucleophile, because our reaction here is with HCN and the aldehydes and ketones. Now, the HCN is actually produced in situ, which remember means in the reaction mixture, by some acidified KCN or NACN. This reaction produces a hydroxy nitrile, and it's very difficult to keep an eye on the different carbons for this structure, so I've added some extra highlights here so you can see where the original three carbons, highlighted in green, and the new carbon, highlighted in yellow, are in the products. You can see here both the aldehyde and the ketone react with the HCN to produce a hydroxy nitrile product, and it should be noted that if you are using any aldehyde other than methanol, or any unsymmetrical ketone in this reaction, then your hydroxy nitrile product will always have a chiral center. Thank you so much for watching this summary of all the aliphatic reactions in A-level chemistry on the OCRA specification. I do recommend you take a screenshot of all these on screen now because it is quite a lot to take in. If you'd like to watch more videos about aliphatic reactions, then click the links on screen now. And don't forget, there's loads of other stuff on my channel like spectroscopy, exam question, walkthroughs. Until next time, happy revising.